from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likens Show. You have meddled with the primal forces of nature, and I won't have it. Is that clear? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likens. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likens Show with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes, anything at all, and anything can happen here. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's 1 800 5 800 866. We take the calls faster than ever. We get through things faster than ever. The shortest breaks we've ever had. If you've had a hard time getting through, believe me, this is a good time to be calling 1 800 5 800 Tom. It's 1 800 5 800 866. Because we're taking calls so quickly. Uh, the odds of you getting through are a lot better the more calls I take, wouldn't you say? It's Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Hey, Tom. I really appreciate the things that you do in over the radio because you speak the truth, man. You really do. I do. Uh, I was just calling concerning uh, about a lot of people how they go through life and they complain. And I don't, I don't need to do or nothing to say bad things about black people or Hispanic. I'm Hispanic myself. But a lot of these people, especially in L.A., they don't work. They... They, what what people are we talking about? Well, a lot of the majority, especially a bunch of black people and Hispanics, they take advantage of the system. You know how working people, they go through their whole life working hard, uh, working hard for the things to, they, they earn and they, they buy, and they still make less money than these people that take advantage of the system. You sure you weren't calling Larry Elder? <laughs> no. Just checking. No, no, we just, you guys concerned because I, I work in L.A., and I saw these people that live in the projects. And it's the funny the funny thing about it that they've been giving awards to people that live in the projects for living it the longest time. Recognizing them for living for being so there, there's, the there's, there's, there's an award to put on your mantle. Of course, would you have a mantle if you lived in the projects? I guess not. <laughs> I guess, but they've been giving it. Kind of Look at this, honey. I got the plaque. Out. We've been living in the projects longer than any other family. Exactly. <laughs> it's funny because it's now that's, that. that is preposterous, but come on, we're talking about a very small group of people. Oh, yeah, it's more, but, the, but that's the people that they take advantage of the whole system, you know? Well, I, I, anyone who's bragging about living in the projects longer than anybody else has got their priorities screwed up. But uh, come on, that's that's not the majority of people. It's not the majority of minorities. Oh, exactly. It's, nice. it's a combination of everything. And as you know, in L.A., the, the minorities are the majority. People of color are the majority in uh, in Los Angeles, no doubt about it. Oh, that's true. But they just, they just complain because they don't get enough. And they get one more, and they want more. Right, but again, that's not most people. That that There are people like that, and I think they're outrageous. By the way, vote no on Mark Ridley Thomas, but that's beside the point. Are you voting? Uh, yeah, don't vote no on that guy. He's, and by the way, it's nothing racial about it. He's voting, running against another black guy who I'm supporting, Bernard Parks. But uh, no, no, Mark, uh, Mark uh, Ridley Thomas. No. No, no. Even, even Obama, you know, he he's qualified. He should go. He's, he's going for what he believes to do. A lot, a lot of even a lot of my minorities or minorities in L.A. They believe because he's going to get elected. A lot of these uh, ethnic groups think they can get away with more things now. You know, it's well, I, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I mean, ever since uh, we have uh, a Mexican American mayor, do you feel like you can get away with more things now? Oh no! It's just a thing that a lot of people doesn't mentality. A lot of people that I, I've been encountered with. Uh, bon boning a reporter, I guess you could do that now. Oh, yeah. You're married, you can bone a TV reporter. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. That's true, Tom. Well, Tom, I was calling to say, you know, I appreciate everything that you say in, uh, over the radio, you know, you speak the truth, and I uh, keep going, man. Keep, keep it up, because a lot of people are learning from your beliefs and the things that you say. And I uh, and, uh, just keep going, because a lot of people are listening to you, and they will never stop listening to you. Oh, I, well, I want to keep that way. Keep it that way. Uh, Bob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Bob. Like is for president. Like is for president. I vote for you in 04, too. <laughs> wow. I'm the one that had that sign in Malibu in 04, like it's for president. I remember that. How did that work out? Did you get a lot of write-ins? <laughs> uh, I think I'm the one that voted for you. <laughs> I wrote I wrote your name in the ballot. I love that. <laughs> hey, I have another reason why not to vote for McCain. Uh, you know, how is McCain going to run this nation or manage this nation when they can't even manage their own campaign? I mean, 
they already don't have enough money to advertise, yet they're spending thousands of dollars to put lipstick on a pig. <laughs> now they're putting lipstick on a slut. <laughs> hey, nice legs. <laughs> Many sluts have nice legs. If anything, I'll vote for the legs. <laughs> I've been listening to you for 10 years, and it's been great. Thank you for the service. Can you take me out the old, old school way with the toilet flush? Yes. Yes, Bob, I can. <laughs> Wide open telephones, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, buddy? How you doing? I'm a little pissed off and, you know, exhausted with all these Republicans. I'm a Republican, but I'm a moderate Republican. Uh -huh. And I'm exhausted with the level of ignorance coming from my party. And I can't wait for Obama to come out and and show what a difference is in this country. Well, you and Colin Powell. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's, it's amazing. You know, I, you know, a lot of Americans, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, but it's reality. Can, they can tell you how many times you kill the uncles in the bathroom or what he had for dinner, but they can't tell you anything else about what's going on in the country. My only problem with Obama is he should just be quiet about throwing government programs at everything, government this and government that, you know. Lay off that, you know, because government is, is no good, okay. He, I know with his, his, his way of being, his way of speaking, he will represent this country properly. He has constantly respected McCain, and McCain, all he knows how to do is, is beat on this poor uh, young man, and he he just tries to fish for stuff that's non-existent, you know, rather than telling us what he's going to do for this country. And he just doesn't do it, you know, and it is. I think it's going to be another eight years of Bush if McCain comes out. Uh, that's exactly what it's going to be. I mean, you can't. Uh, we we need to make that change. Whether or not we completely agree with Barack Obama, and uh, by the way, I don't either. Right. But yeah, but you know, but it's time for a change, okay? And I think that the perfect balance is when you have a Democrat or a Republican as a president, and then you have Congress of the opposing party, because then you have checks and balances. That was the beautiful thing what happened with uh, Clinton, when Clinton in office. Congress was Republican. We had a surplus. Everything was wonderful. The minute the Republicans, you know, stayed in, in, in Congress and then we had uh, Bush come out, the country went to hell. And I'm tired of it, man. I come from an oppressed country. I've been, I've been here all my life. I was six years old, but I'm originally from Cuba. And the reason I'm Republican is because I hate big government. But unfortunately... Now we have the biggest government in the history of the United States. Yeah, nobody Republican. nobody expanded the government more than Bush and the people in Congress the first six years of Bush. Exactly. You know, and I, I'm just fed up. You know, I just want, you know, this country to be the wonderful nation that it's always been, you know, leader of the world. As you can see, we sneeze and the world, rest of the world is collapsing because of our, because of our own uh, market. You know, and if that doesn't wake people up and say, you know, we got to have somebody who's going to learn how to take control of this country and lead, because the president is a leader. He can't do everything. You know, people are under the, the, you know, the assumption that a president controls everything. No, he's a leader. He tries to lead and, and, and do things, but he can only lead. He can't have his hand in everything. You know, that's why you have all the, you know, the cabinet. I, I for one, like to have my hand in everything, if you know what I mean. Uh, Michael, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, I got a problem. Yeah? I'm a disobedient child, and I did not listen to you, and I had sex without a condom, and now my girlfriend's pregnant, and my family and her family are both pushing for me to marry her. Well, what should I do? You don't want to get married, do you? Not really, sir. Then don't do it. What can they? What can they do to force you to get married? Force me. My family and her family. We, they both like each other, and they like me. And I'm stuck in the middle. You know. You don't want to be really married. Like End of story. You don't want to be married. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter what the families think. You don't want to be married. Yes, sir. 
I just don't know because she's going to have a baby, and I think child support would be worse than having two incomes going into the same house. You're, look, you're going to be paying child support whether you're with her or you're not with her. But if you're with her, then you're going to be paying for everything. You're going to be paying for her uh, purses. You're going to be paying for her uh, clothing. You're going to be paying for her groceries. You're going to be paying for everything. If you don't marry her, all you're paying is the child support you're legally required to pay. And then if you get divorced from her after marrying her, you would have to pay her alimony in addition to child support, which you don't have to pay if you don't get married. So it's clear you don't need to get married. It doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. I, I'll tell you what. Your parents uh, think this is a good idea. Let them write a contract and say that if you get divorced, they'll pay your alimony. All right. And what What should I do? Should I get a preamp with the situation? Uh, yeah, first of all, you shouldn't be getting married. Yes. But if I, if I was going to to make everybody happy, what would you say? Well, you, know, you have to make you happy first. Pardon me? You have to make yourself happy. I know. Why but, aren't you concerned about yourself? Uh, but the family, it's hard to go. I choose you as my father out of anybody. Well, I, well I, then your father is telling you, if you don't want to be married, you shouldn't be married. Uh, is well, that simple? Thank you. By the Can way, you you're not in love with this chick, are you? Well, I've known her since seventh grade. That doesn't make you in love with her. I've known I've known some people my whole life. I wouldn't marry them or have babies with them. Oh, but she's always been a good girl. She's really smart and she makes that money. Doesn't mean you want to get married to her either. Did he? Uh, oh, he did. Zero tolerance policy. Yeah. I didn't hear what he said. What was it? The S word. He said the S word. Oh, slid one by me. Of course, if he hadn't slid one past his girlfriend, he wouldn't be in this position. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. the Tom Likas Show of Wide Open Telephones at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Andre on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, I got a question. Um, like two days ago, caller called in. He started to say something about the asset calendar. He mentioned Obama, and then you cut him off. You told him what? What he was trying to do I didn't cut legal. him off. He asked me a question, and I answered it. I said, no, I don't believe that, and I don't, and he was still on the phone. So don't be calling here and saying I cut him off, because in that case, I didn't cut anybody off. No, you, you said what he was doing was illegal. I didn't understand what, what was illegal about it. Uh, did he say a curse word on the air? Uh, I, I don't know. He was trying to talk fast, but maybe I thought, I thought he was trying to get... Get something across about Obama. It, uh, no, he probably said a curse word. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Devin on the Tom. Is that Devin or Devin? Devin. Devin on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. How are you this evening, Tom? Doing great, Devin. Tom, you are a true Renaissance man, sir. Why? Thank you. I just called to talk to you about this uh, crazy half-baked uh, McCain supporter and apparent campaign worker who said she was attacked by a six foot four inch African American man. Uh, right, who carved, a, who supposedly carved a B on her face, a, a backwards B at that time. What's up with that? Well, cause she admitted it was. Uh, she admitted she lied now, but the backwards B clearly she stood in a mirror and made a B on her face and thought that it, it, it looked like a B. Clearly, if we, you know, she is a B, but we're not even going to get into that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it just goes to show what kind of looms this Republican ticket is attracting this election cycle. I mean, it's, it's totally crazy and it's ridiculous. And the story kind of reminded me of a political version of the Susan Smith story. Yes. I mean, come on now. You, you know, she wouldn't have, wouldn't have uh, told the truth. How many six foot four inch black men the Pittsburgh police would have been looking for? 
<laughs> well, yeah. As a, as a black man, we already know we're going to get, uh, we're already going to get life for a robbery. Why sign up for a death sentence for actually carving a B into her face? Come on, Tom. Yeah, ab- absolutely. What is up with that? I mean, but that just goes to show the desperation of the McCain ticket, the McCain Taylor ticket, and it's so ridiculous. Well, that's again. That yeah, I think you're right. That's that's who uh, McCain and uh, Sarah Palin are attracting. Yeah, and you know what? I am so glad on November fourth we're going to put the Chris Keeper out of business. About it. <laughs> I mean, come on. Doesn't he sound like the Chris Keeper? Oh, absolutely. Doesn't he sometimes look like the Chris Keeper. I, I, I want to tell you something. I voted today. It's done. I I vote absentee, so I uh, did my ballot today. I am so glad you did that. I'm so happy for you. And just one more thing, Tom. I I know it's not intended to be so, but uh, like it's one on one. The concepts of like it's one on one actually works in marriage, and I'm happy about that. I love it. Yes, sir. Can you take me out Kobe style with a yes. food dog at the end? Yes, I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Oh. Biatch! It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Lexi on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great, Lexi. Good. I have two things I want to talk to you, talk to you about. One, the other day you were talking about, I think a caller called in and said, how come... You're putting McCain down, and um, you're very democratic and everything. And anyone that listens to you more than a couple times know you've said you're libertarian, right? Yes. And I just think it's so relevant for people to listen to you because you, um, like someone said, uh, you told them some information about something, and you said, well, don't take my word for it. Research it yourself. And I'm 24, and um, last presidential election i didn't know anything know who i wanted to vote for or what i thought about certain issues this election i kind of made it a goal to really research things start listening to different opinions i started listening to you and i just realized how important it is to really know what's going on and a lot of people my age i feel like are more interested in dancing with the stars or what's going on with britney spears rather than really important things that are going to affect us in the future. So I just, I'm really glad that you're talking about this stuff because I'm listening and it's really helped me decide um, who to vote for. Well, I think that's great. Um, And uh, you're voting on election day, I take it? Definitely. I I registered and um, I was confused at first as far as how much, how experience was playing into this with McCain versus Obama. And if I wanted to vote based on experience or if I wanted to vote based on issues, and I came to the the kind of the conclusion I came to was taking out any partisanship out of it, Democrat or Republican. What person would want someone with an anger problem like that to be running United States of America? Oh, I totally agree with that. Brittany on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. So I'm just in my car, and I had to call you because I'm so frustrated with all of these guys calling, asking you if they should get married or not. I am so tired of them being like, well, I've been with her for so long, or my family thinks I should. Let me tell you, I'm about to be 22 years old. I'm dating a 35-year-old, I, but I want them to fast forward their life like 10 years, and they want to date the hot 22-year-old. It's not, 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 not a good idea to have been married before. It's just not attractive. Well, uh, it, it can't be that bad because here you are. You're with a guy who's been married before, right? Yeah, and I will not marry him. And I will not get married. I will not get married because I don't believe in it now. And you know what? My parents have been married for 25 years, so I'm not cold-hearted. I just I do not believe in marriage, and I just want to scream when these guys are like, well, should I get married? Those are my boyfriend's excuses, too. Like, well, we were together for nine years, and our families wanted us to get married. I'm telling you, do not do it, please. Yeah, well, I agree with that. 
Thank you. That's all I have to say. So all of these guys, please do not get married. Don't get married now. Don't get married later, for God's sake. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here. Look at these calls. There's so many of them. Let me grab uh, David on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much. Hey, man. I want to know what you think about, like, when... I want to know what you think about the people, like, when you're driving on the freeway... What do you actually think about the people when you see a McCain Palin bumper sticker? I mean, what do you actually think? What are they? Thinking? I, you know what? I hate bumper stickers. I don't care who you support, or by the way, I don't care if it's a political bumper sticker or what it is. I don't care if your kid's an honor roll student. I, I couldn't. You know what? I don't want to know about you. Just get out of my way and let me drive. <laughs> let me change the question then. Care about your problems. Let me let me change the question then. No, not the bumper sticker itself, but. The bumper sticker no, letting you know about who they're voting for, not the bumper sticker itself. But uh, well, the thing you, is, though, I, that that's the thing. I don't, I don't think of one bumper sticker as being worse than another because I hate bumper stickers. Now that, now that you look at the person, and you could forget about the bumper sticker, but if you look at the person now, you, I mean, what do you think about people? This, this is a question. What do you? What is the reasoning that you think? people are voting for McCain or Palin. I mean, what... Because they like Bush. It, yeah, I mean, what? That, that's stupid. I mean, I don't understand that. And mm -hmm. and with Bush's, Bush's um, popularity rating being so low, how come his... Um, but these, his, are, uh, these are the ones who said yes to Bush. Yeah, but how come the... How come there's... It's so... Um, you know, it's almost 40... You know, in the upper 40s for... McCain and Bush's popularity rating is, what, in the 20-something. I don't understand why there's so many... Well, I think there's a certain number of people... Look, let's face it. There's a certain number of people who don't like Barack Obama because he's black. There's a certain number of people who don't like Barack Obama because they think, they think he's going to raise taxes. Of course, how many of these morons make $250,000 a year? Hello? Yeah. And then there's a certain number of morons who don't know uh, that Barack Obama's only going to tax people who make over $250,000 a year. So... You know, uh, look, to each his own, but uh, that's the morons we got. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones on this Friday. Send us an email. I read those while we're on the air. Send it to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Barbara, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, I've been listening to you. I just actually just came across your station by luck, in a way. I'm a new listener. And I've been listening to you, and I've been trying to have an open mind. I'm in my mm. 50s. I have a daughter who's in her 20s. Uh-huh. And I feel really bad that you think it's a good idea for men to lie to my daughter and then get her drunk so he will go to bed with her. Well, if your daughter was so virtuous, it wouldn't matter whether she got drunk or not. She would not go to bed with anybody. No, no but here's, here's what I don't get is that you are encouraging this and patting the men on the back. Yes. Women. Well, they're already doing it. They didn't need my encouragement. I'm just simply uh, going along with the flow here. No, I really, I hear them call you and praise you and ask for advice how yeah. they can, what other lies they can come up well, with. Well, it works. Lie to my, my daughter. Well, look, if your daughter will sleep with someone because his first name is doctor, she got what she paid for. No, she won't. I'm uh, well, sure uh, don't be so sure. Part of it. I'm just saying, I'm just using my daughter as an example. Or even so myself. have many of us, huh? Well, as myself, but why do you pat them on the back and encourage them to do this? Because it's very effective. Uh, they're doing what works, and I'm congratulating them for doing what works. I mean, it's very you simple. It's good. You think it's good that men lie to women? Well, what could what lie could someone possibly tell your daughter to get her to jump into bed with them? No, I'm, I lie to women. Well, I'm asking you, what lie could someone tell your daughter to get her to hop into bed with them? Nothing. Nothing. She... All right, so there you go. Why are you worried about it? I'm just saying, I'm speaking so for your daughter. So your daughter is a virgin? I'm speaking for women in general. Is your okay? daughter a virgin? No. She's not. 
No, she's dating someone. Ah, what lie did he tell? Pardon me? What lie did he tell? And the answer is only time will tell. Why Why did he tell? I didn't no, I it. said what lie Nothing. did oh he God. tell? We don't know never, what lie never. he told. We don't know yet until the relationship is over. Then we'll find out. Oh, no. I no, know no. young man. Oh, yes, yes. So, anyways, I don't, That's I what every mother says. Head. I, I just want to go off every I every by the way it. every every woman I've boned they all had mothers and they all thought the same thing. Yeah, it hurts. But me as a woman, it hurts me. Why? Why does a man? First of all, he must be pretty much a loser if he has to lie to a woman and get her drunk. We don't have to, but it works. But you see, lying to a woman and getting her drunk saves us having to get to know her, having to spend money on her, having to meet her family. We just want to get laid. We have no interest in that stuff. That's so pitiful. That's how it is. No, it's pitiful. That's how it is. And it was that way before I ever had a radio show. It makes me think you don't have respect for women at all. It has nothing to do with respect. First of all, I don't respect anyone as a group. Each individual has to earn my respect. Men and women both. So when I meet a stranger, uh, I don't have respect for them automatically. Respect is earned. Well... Yeah, but you're, even before he knows the woman, you're telling him to disrespect her. No, I'm just telling, no, I'm telling him to, uh, lie to her if he has to. Uh, by the way, uh, here in Southern California, women ask men, where do you live? What do you do for a living? How much do you make? What zip no. code do you live? Oh, yes, darling, you have not dated women in Southern California, and they do that. And I'm telling you the way around that is to, if a woman wants to date a doctor, poof, I'm a doctor. Yeah, but he won't date her anyways because you're telling him to dump her after he's well. Sex I mean, with her. Uh, dining, uh, dating equals porking, and uh, dating is a euphemism for effing. Exactly. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about. By the time she figures out he's not a doctor, he already got what he wanted. All right, let me let me ask you one more thing. Hello. Yes. Okay. If he gets her drunk, right, and he's lied to her, right, and he goes to bed with her yeah. because she's drunk. She is in an altered state of mind, correct? Uh, if you're going to, going for what's legal and what's not, that's only in Mass- Massachusetts and not in California. You in California, date rape? And, no, it's, it's it's only date rape if she says no. No, that's date rape. No, it's has, not. It, in California and most states, you it is not. O- it no. is only date rape if she says no. It's an, if she's in an altered state of Are you state an attorney? Mind, Are you an attorney? Oh, no. All right, I'm telling you that in Massachusetts, what you're saying is true. But in California and most other states, it's not. Now, maybe the law will change someday, but that's the way it is. How you know, you get, getting a woman drunk and lying to her to get her to go to bed is a time-honored tradition. Uh, what if it's your daughter? I don't have a daughter. I have other people's I daughters. You don't. I know you don't, but if you did, come on. I have other people's but, well, daughters. How would you feel if somebody did that to your child and maybe gave them a venereal no, disease? Like, as a man, I know how men are. I know how men are. So the way to avoid that is to tell your daughter, you know, wait until marriage. But, of course, uh, even you didn't do that. Oh, I sure did. Oh, but she uh, so she violated uh, your principles and went ahead and got laid anyway. I did. I did wait till marriage. And but my she husband... didn't. Your daughter is is not a virgin. No, but she's she's dating a very nice man. All right, well, that's what you're saying about him now. By the way, they're all very nice men until they screw you over, and then right. they're lousy men. And uh, how you know, we have women calling the show all the time about guys who screwed them over, guys who were creeps. Uh, guess what? No, I'm not saying guys are creeps, but you're encouraging them to be there. I'm encouraging guys to do whatever they have to do to get laid, which they were doing anyway, but I just give them ways that work. Why is it only men that you support? Why can't well, you no, give I, girls, I, By the way, I, if women want to, any woman who wants to get laid, I will tell her how to get, you know how a woman gets laid? What if she wants I'm gonna to get tell you if, if I'm going to tell you as a woman, if you want to know how to get laid, here's how you do it. You put your left leg at the 10 and your right leg at the 2. No, I'm saying you That's only how you give get this, you only give advice. And watch your mouth, lady. Watch you your mouth. You give advice. I, I know. You, you, you only give advice to men that will uh, hurt Darling, women. any woman who calls in here and says, Tom, I'm horny and I need to get laid tonight. Will you tell me how to do it? I will tell her. I will you be happy to. You have, In fact, you have your daughter call in. I'll tell her how to get laid. 
Left yeah, leg of the tent, I, like the, like like they taught you in drivers drivers ed about your hands on the steering wheel. Put your left leg of the tent, your right leg of the two. I guarantee she'll get late. That is very very low. That's a if fact. You, if a guy does this, no, it's just very low, and you are supporting this low level. I am supporting guys for being guys because that's the way guys are. Yeah, there's a very easy way to avoid my evil ways, and that is don't have sex with anybody. Have sex when you get married. But, but of course, women want to have sex before they get married. Even your daughter did. If, if, there are, if she feels in love with this man, well, and that's that, why. That, well, there you go. But later on, if we find out the guy has an ex-wife, or the guy is married no. in another country, no. or, or the guy is boning three other women, well, you'll find out later, and then you'll see what a creep he is, too. No, she, she's known him since high school. Does it doesn't mean anything. Well, does it mean anything. And he... She trusts him. Well, and most women do trust the guy they're with until they find out why they shouldn't have trusted him. Well, that's, what, is it, what is that saying about men, then? If you think men can... Men just, men just want to get laid. That's what it says. I don't know. I just wish you would encourage morals and values instead of... I'm encur here's the value I'm encouraging. If you want to get laid, say whatever you have to say. Value. Because most women are materially oriented, and if you're a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, the third baseman for the St. Louis Cardinals or whatever, women will hop into the sack with you, and then they'll tell Joe Nice Guy down in the IT department, well, Joe, I really have to get to know you, and make him go on 75 dates before they put out with him. Why is putting out so important? Because guys just want to get laid. You, got, you have to understand that for a man, ejaculation is like urination. Well, okay, we we need to do it. It's pitiful and, that they're they're like dogs. Then, well, yeah, we are, and we in fact we're not like dogs. I I would say we are dogs. If you, that's not an insult, that's how it is. There's a fire hydrant with my name on it. You know, you're very entertaining to talk to, but you really upset me. You know what you need? You need my handprint on your ass. <laughs> you need a little discipline. I need discipline? <laughs> I need discipline. Yes, yes. I'll, I'll be happy. Oh, to, what, a very giving... I will be happy to administer that discipline. Now, I was a very giving wife to my husband. Yeah. He wanted to go to school when yeah. he lost his job. Where is he now? He said, now listen to me. Listen for a minute. He, he was a creep, right? Well, he was a good man until... Until he boned he, his secretary. I said, I said, to support him so he could further his career. Right. I said, let's use our retirement money. Uh-huh. So you can go to school. Right. And be a teacher like he wanted. Uh-huh. All right? Yes. $60,000 later. He boned a student? Pardon me? Did he have sex with a student? Oh, no, no. But he got his career. I stood by him all the time he was out of work. Trophy wife? I did. I was the, what they call the starter wife, you know. Yes, and he found the trophy wife. I'm not a trophy. My God. No, no, he no. found the trophy wife and then left you. No. No, he didn't find another woman. He just got apparently tired of me and said goodbye after he got his job as a teacher he just, I wasn't did, he just, did, he just didn't tell you about the trophy one i don't know if he ever no my gosh he did not i'm just hurt okay this is what he did to me and i stood by him i was a good woman i i understand all that but but you know there's something troubling uh because uh, and I'm, I'm not saying this to be mean okay i'm saying this because we've done the show about this all right um you know <laughs> I, I use cars as an analogy, okay? And cars, cars, cars because okay. guys like cars, okay? Yeah. Hey, there's, a, by the way, I think the Toyota Corolla is a great car. It's a great okay. car, you know. It's reliable, dependable. Uh, you can drive it 250 thousand miles. It's still going. What a great car that is! <laughs> but you know what? Look at the guy driving the Toyota Corolla, or a Kia Sedona. Or a Nissan Sentra. That's not the car the guy grew up dreaming of driving. He grew up dreaming of driving a Testarossa. A Ferrari. But, but, but guess what? This is all he can afford. So he drives it. But the day that guy wins the lottery, okay. he's going to trade his Nissan Sentra in and he's going to buy a Testarossa. Well, okay? I'll tell you something. Most men don't know how to drive anyway. Well, all right. Well, that's a whole other story. But did your did your husband drive stick? <laughs> he 
know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, I just, it just, I feel you bad like you like me you like me more than you thought you did when you called in, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, but your I husband, really, your really husband, your couch, husband but... only should have been as funny as I. Who? Your husband. Remember your husband? <laughs> you know, it's a shame because I was a size eight all our marriage, and I kept myself up. I really did. Really? I yes, I did. I'm a full blooded Italian. Mm. I have a I have a good shape. Really? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what time? What time will you be available? No. I just feel bad that you talk to I'm falling, in, I'm falling in love. Sex with women. I want to be honest with you. You know, why don't they... I, I, what? You know, my, you know, people call me Tom, but my first name, it's Doctor. <laughs> Dr. Lycus. So, okay. But it just hurts me that you encourage men to lie to women, and you give them a... How, I even heard a guy call in and say, what, what's a good lie I can use? Oh, no, we've had that many times. I've told guys, you're a film producer, you're a photographer thought, for why? Playboy. Why is this a good thing? Because it works. Women and then, but wh and why, the guy that but said, why does it work? Why, how about the guy that lied to her and said, I'll be your boyfriend and everything? But if a woman had values, why would she believe this? Because she liked him. But no, no, it's not because she likes him. When a guy says, I'm a rock star, I'm a football player, I'm a doctor, uh, women are not falling in love with him because they like him. They're falling in love with him because he's a doctor. I'll tell you what. Go out tonight and be a nice guy and say, hi, I, I make sandwiches over at Quiznos. No. Women are going to say, nice meet you. Now beat it, pal. You're not. Okay, this man said... I will date you. I'll be your boyfriend. All you got, you know, just let's just go to bed. And she believed that they were going to have a relationship. I'll be your boyfriend. That sounds like a great lie. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show on 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> it's wide open telephones. This is your chance to get it in. That's what I said. Chris on the Tom Like Yes. Chris on the Tom Like us show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey man, listen, I just got back uh from uh uh out of the army and got out here to California about six months ago and about Two months ago, I was listening to your show, and uh, the first time I listened, I thought you were a political show. And uh, the next day, one of my coworkers told me, no, you got to listen to him the rest of the week. And I have to say, brother, you're doing great work out there, man. That well, is thank unbelievable. You. Thank you so much. I, I, got, a, I got a question for you. Um, I've been hearing people call in. I listen, I listen to you now every day driving home back from work. I'm in traffic for about an hour and a half. Um, and I hear a lot of people calling in about the, you know, the politics, you know, what's going on with, you know, the propositions here and McCain and Obama. But, you know, the thing that I'm kind of curious is, you know, have you seen those polls that are coming out saying the race is tightening? Well, I, I see news stories saying that, but I've got a list of the polls right here. It doesn't look so tight to me. Right. And it was the, it was the Associated Press poll that came out that says, you know, those other polls are kind of, uh, they're not as accurate as those, and I, I'm, I'm not a pollster, so I don't know. But I mean, in in today's time right now, and you know, you're talking to a guy. By the way, by on. the way, if this doesn't tell you something, what what will? The Fox News poll, Fox News, has Obama up by nine points. <laughs> that's true. That's that's, that's if that's that doesn't if that point. doesn't tell you where it's at, nothing will. Well, the the thing that concerns me though is because I, 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 you know, I, I'm, I feel I'm a pretty well educated person. I keep up to date on the news. But the thing that's kind of concerning me is is the push. And I actually, back in 2000, I liked McCain. I thought that you know he was a, a different guy than he is now. That's but, just because you knew nothing about the guy. What's that? That's because you essentially knew nothing about him except what you read. And what you read was, oh, yes, he's a maverick. Oh, yes, he, he goes and gets in the face of Republicans. Oh, yes, he, he doesn't march in lockstep with the Republicans. Little sure. did you know the guy just rubber stamped just about everything George Bush ever sent down the pike. Oh, hey, listen, I, 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 did, hey, I, I did seven years in the Army, and I graduated you know, from college in 2000, so I, I got one year before... 
everything, you know, hit, you know, hit the fan. And we were gone. You know, I, I didn't, you know, I was gone for, you know, most of my time. Right. Um, I'm a, you know, I'm an independent. I'm not a Republican or Democrat. I think they're both messed up. Yes. Um, and, uh, but I, I have to say to everybody that's out there listening that I'm, I'm a little bit shocked because, you know, with my brethren and myself being over there and the things that we've done, and, and believe me, you know, people will say, oh, we're out there and we're, we're telling everybody that we're doing great stuff. You know, I guarantee you that's not accurate. Everybody that I talk to doesn't want to be there. We want to be home. We don't want to be out there. And the thing that kind of surprises me is now that we're in the heat of this and they're bringing up, you know, Bill Ayers or Palin's bringing up, you know, McCain won't even do it. It's Palin that's doing it. They're bringing up the experience issue. Now, I have to sit there and say, hey, listen, I understand Obama. He didn't sit there and he didn't go to, you know, he didn't serve in the military like McCain did. And, you know, I understand that some people think that that should be a prerequisite to being the commander in chief. But the guy is just smart. And what drives me up a wall is that people are just, I know, you know, you got those people out there that aren't going to vote for him just because of the color of his skin. He can't do anything about them. But the people that would still sit there and think that McCain is going to continue or not continue what's going on right now, I mean, what is this country, what do we have to go to? What do we have to get into? Does the whole financial market have to melt down? Does, do we have to start thinking about China, you know, saying we're going to take over before people in America start realizing that, Things need to change, and, you know, everybody says that, that Obama is an outsider that doesn't have experience. Look what the experience guys give us. I know. And I mean, uh, are- yeah, sure, McCain has experience. He has experience uh, being involved in the bailout in uh, 2008. He has experience with the Keating Five. Yeah, he's got plenty of experience. But you have to give McCain credit for one thing. You got to give him credit for hitting that, that, uh, that younger uh, chick that was in his campaign, don't you? <laughs> Are you telling me he put that B on her face? I, I, I have to think that he had to, man. I mean, hey, he might be 72, but he's still a man. <laughs> You're out of control. Thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. If you got that, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.